Okay, so let me start with another session of uh, you know FMG MCQ discussion in pediatrics. Let us start with question number 11. Which is the most common cause of neonatal sepsis in India? Now, why this question is chosen by me is because uh, you know most of our students will be Indian students and of course this is an important question for them. But uh, this may work for other students who are uh, you know join uh, in our university from South Asian region as well. Look at the option A is Klebsiella pneumonia, B is Mycoplasma, C is group Streptococci and D is Listeria. Now Mycoplasma pneumonia can be easily ruled out because it is not the common organism for the neonatal sepsis. But option A, C and D all can cause neonatal sepsis but which is the most common one that is Klebsiella. Okay? Klebsiella pneumonia is the most common uh, bacteria, the most common bacteria which cause neonatal sepsis, which cause neonatal sepsis. Now, neonatal sepsis are of two types, early and late, early and late. Usually, Klebsiella pneumonia cause late type of neonatal sepsis and meningitis is the common presentation in that case, whereas early neonatal sepsis is predominantly caused by group B streptococci and pneumonia is the most common presentation here and sepsis can occur in both. Okay? Let us move on. Question number 12, a term child is brought with the complaints of having jaundice on day 3 of life. How much should be the minimum level to cause jaundice? This is again I think this type of question we have already solved uh, today itself. So, the answer is pretty simple. It is 5 milligram per cent. Let me remind you again, in case of neonate, okay, to see the visible jaundice, the total TSV level should be or equal to more than 5 milligram per cent. Okay. Now, a little bit of discussion regarding neonatal jaundice here. If the jaundice occur on first day, first day itself, it is always pathological, okay. And if it occurs from second day onward, onwards, then the high chance of this jaundice to be is physiological. But pathological jaundice has got some criteria. If uh, the criteria is met, then we have to call it pathological, okay. Now, Question number 13, see here, a baby, a term baby is apneic, apneic means the baby is not breathing and has a heart rate of 90 per minute, bag and mass ventilation was given for 30 seconds, subsequently the heart rate is still less than 100. So what is the next step? Now, this is a very common question which is asked in FMG exam or other licensing exam. Now, because of the apnea and uh, heart rate less than 100, they have started bag and mask ventilation for 30 seconds and after that they have taken the heart rate once again, but it is still less than 100. That means something is wrong, okay? everything is not right here. So, how do you find out what is wrong and what do you want to do now? So, look at the option, reduce oxygen supply, this is out of equation, we never do that check the chest movement, give supplemental oxygen and give chest compression. Now, check the chest movement is the, you know, correct answer here because we want to see how effective is your bag and mask ventilation, whether the air is leaking from the side or not. If it is leaking from the side, then not much air will enter into the lung. So, chest will not rise, you know. So, chest movement checking is the best option in this question. Give supplemental oxygen. Now, giving oxygen only is not enough, okay, because we need to find out why uh, the heart rate is not improving and chest compression, it is not indicated yet. Chest compression is done only when uh, after correcting everything, uh, if the heart rate is still less than 60 per minute, then only we go for chest compression. Question number 14. Apgar score system contains all of the following criteria except, now this is pretty simple uh, as well as a little bit tricky, you know, why it is tricky, let me explain to you. First, 
uh, what is apgar score what is the full form of apgar let me clarify that a stands for appearance p is pulse but in the newborn we call it heart rate okay g stands for grimace a stands for activity and r stands for respiratory respiratory effort or respiration only but that respiration means always respiratory effort it is not the respiratory rate now let's go to the option so if respiratory rate is not there then of course that is the answer here because it is a except question all of the three are the you know component of our score see this color color is the appearance motor activity is activity and heart rate is the pulsar heart rate so a is the answer here so please whenever you solve this type of question dear student one uh, you know sincere suggestion for you always read the question two times and look at the option okay because this will be a very silly mistake if you do wrong here question of 15 a true about cephal hematoma Now, what is cephal hematoma first cephal hematoma is a collection of blood clot it is a collection of blood clot below the periosteum okay below the periosteum okay this is the important point here so uh, this of course is caused by birth trauma so let's look at the option here now jaundice is prolonged due to cephalomatoma this is true this is very true crosses the suture line this is false it never crosses the suture line because uh, you know it is bounded by periosteum and those periosteum you know end at the suture you know from the suture to the other bone there is another you know periosteum will start so they never cross the suture line it appears an occiput in first few hours of life this is false without trauma why should it appear and it occurs due to rupture of the bridging arteries false usually because of the rupture of bridging veins or some other type of trauma so the answer is straightforward here this is a that is jaundice is prolonged due to cephalhematoma now why jaundice is prolonged you need to understand this remember jaundice is hyper bilirubinemia okay and from where the bilirubin forms bilirubin forms from the rbc when rbcs are broken down okay heme will be released and heme will form bilirubin that's why that is a source of formation of excessive bilirubin in the baby okay and regarding the treatment i like to give a little bit more knowledge here regarding the treatment of cephalhematoma you don't do anything you just wait and watch okay if the jaundice is not excessive if the jaundice is excessive then you have to go for the treatment of that either photo therapy if it is crossing the limit or just wait and watch okay so uh, let me end this session as well will continue again thank you